morning, everyone. What a great morning. This morning is the greatest day in history. People say, why is this such a great day? Well, folks, this day that we celebrate is the day that sin and death and hell were defeated. This is the day that God prepared before the foundation of the world. Imagine that. Before anything that ever existed, God set apart the plan of salvation for all of us. That anyone who calls upon the name of Jesus can and will be saved. And so this morning, I just want to share a few moments, just a few moments about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the perspective of the disciples. Nothing defines Christianity better than these three words. He is risen. Thank you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. You see, that is a confession of our faith that Jesus Christ has been risen from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the center point of our faith. This overcomes the power of death and gives us life to live. And it is in the life of faith that we have, that we are aware of the challenges that we face every day in the 21st century. We have a challenge that happens with our faith. Did you know that the disciples, even though they walked with Jesus, they spoke with Jesus, they ate with Jesus, they saw the miracles of Jesus, they still had challenges to their faith. They looked at to that which they could see rather than what they could believe. They, they thought of how they could get through life rather than rely on the promises of God. And you know what? I think we are also at the mercy of similar things that the disciples faced in their life. You see, faith in a promise requires us to look beyond what we see and even what we feel at times. Consider this for a moment. The disciples, knowing and seeing Jesus crucified, the Messiah that they believed, the Saviour of the world, seeing his body marred beyond that of a recognisable human being. And to hear and to see his last breath and then for him to say, it is finished. I think about the disciples in the story at times. And how they would react and how they would feel. And I, I, I thought to myself, did they really understand what had happened? On Good Friday, Pastor Pavey spoke about, it is finished. Pointing to the work that Jesus had to do. Not he is finished, but it is finished. And when they heard those words, what was going on in their minds, in their hearts, and seeing their saviour, their hope, their belief that they, that they would have this incredible life and he's gone. Did they truly believe? Have you ever experienced that? In a moment where you just feel everything is lost and everything is gone and there is no hope not for tomorrow, but for today. I've been there. I've experienced that. When at times standing by myself or standing with my, my wife and standing and feeling, how is this going to change? How is it going to be different? And there is no hope. And it's all gone. And it's all lost. Those disciples, they, they just thought, wow. In the midst of a trial, what happens to our faith? Joseph of Arimathea, he went to Pilate 
The scripture tells us and said, can I have the body of Jesus? And he said, yeah. And Nicodemus, a religious man of the day, was there with him. And they took the body of Jesus and they took cloths and they wrapped his body and they put him into a tomb. And that tomb was actually Joseph's tomb that he had by hand carved out of the side of a mountain. And he lays Jesus in that tomb with Nicodemus. And they roll a stone in front of that tomb and they go away. My goodness. Where was their faith at that time? You know, fear will fight against your faith in God. Fear will challenge your faith. Fear will try to control you. Fear will try to abandon you to the promises of God. And even the direction of where God wants you to go. The scripture tells us this. For we walk by faith and not by sight. But those disciples, they're just like us folks. They're no different. They had their challenges and all hope was gone. Can I suggest that even we at times feel that all hope is gone? And what do we do? Well, John chapter 20, verse 1 to 2, up on the screen. These were the challenges that the disciples face and that we face. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark. There's no light and saw the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples and and the one whom Jesus loved, who was John, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have laid him. Think about these words. They have taken him. You know what? The disciples were looking for the wrong person. Who are they? Who are they? Do you know? Nobody had taken the body of Jesus. He was risen from the dead. And you can't find they because they don't exist. People of faith, I want you to understand. Don't blame they. Don't blame they. Oh, have you ever gone through something having a hard time? I don't, I, I don't know if this is just me. I hope it's you too, because I would feel really weird if it was just me. And you go, yes, you are really weird because it is just you. But listen to me, folks. Have you ever said this? Have you ever created the fictitious in your own mind and said, they are all against me. They don't love me. They all hate me. They, 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 they. Who are they? This is a fictitious part of our mind that runs to look for someone else rather than to face what we do. If only we could walk by faith in the promise of God, we wouldn't have to worry about they. Because they don't exist. What had Jesus directed them to do? Matthew chapter 26 verse 32 tells us this. This is what Jesus says. But after I am raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Have you ever forgotten a promise that God has given you? And you've been caught up in all the pressure and all the stress. And you're thinking, oh, they, they, they're against me. They're not for me. They, they, they. And you forget what God has promised you. Mary was looking for a people that didn't exist. People who had not done anything. And she did not remember the words of Jesus. And you know, sometimes I think we do that as well. We forget the words of Jesus, but we need to remember the words of Jesus. Don't look for they. Look for him. Don't look for they. Look for Jesus. What did Jesus say? He said this, never I will leave you 
and never will I forsake you. That is the power of the resurrected Christ. That he came back from the dead and he has, he has won what was the, the torment of mankind, which is to die and have no purpose in their life. But Jesus, he has won. Well, Pastor Jim, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Can I give you a confession? Sometimes I don't feel it. I don't feel the presence of God. But you know what? Sometimes I don't feel the love from Pastor Pavey. Like now. Like now. I don't feel it. But I know. She loves me. She loves me. Do you love me? More than I can imagine or possibly think. She loves me. But I don't walk around going, oh, I feel the love. I feel the love. Man, I feel the love. I have to trust what she says. I have to put my faith in her. After 41 years of marriage, I've got no choice but to trust her. You don't need to feel the love. You just know it's there. Folks, I don't walk over to the electric light switch and go, man, I've got to feel the electricity to see if the light will come on. <laughs> you don't need to feel it to know that it's there. It's when you put it on. It comes on. And do you know when you need him? He comes on. He's there. He loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his life for you. Man, you don't have to feel it. You just got to know it. And Mary's going, they, they, they. You don't look for they. You look for him, the author and the finisher of your faith. When you don't feel it, just say, I know it. That's the power of the resurrection. What else did the disciples do on this amazing, the greatest day of all? Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 6. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found that the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed, that means bewildered, confused about this, behold, two men stood by them in the dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened, bowed down their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember, he told you while he was still in Galilee. They were looking in the wrong place for Jesus. You don't look for life in a cemetery. You don't go to the graveyard and hope someone's going to talk to you. Well, I hope not anyway. You don't. You don't look for the living amongst the dead. They were going to a tomb. What were they expecting to find? A dead man? Jesus told them, I will rise from the dead. You know, sometimes we're looking for things in the wrong place. But it's okay. Jesus knows what we're like. He knows what we're going to do. So what did God do? He sent his angels and they rolled, around, rolled that stone away. I can imagine the angels going... What are you doing here? He's not risen. He's alive. Go to Galilee. Go to where you're supposed to go. But you know what? Because we have this sometimes emotional tie to things, we go back to those places. Have you ever done that? Have you ever experienced something and a memory is jogged? You know, when I was growing up, we had a, uh, a catamaran 
that was made out of ply. And every, every time before summer came, we would sand this catamaran, the plywood, and we would sand it all down to prepare it for the season ahead. And then we would put on marine varnish. Every time I hear or, or smell marine varnish, I am transported back in the time to that moment that I'm standing at the back of the yard putting marine varnish on a cat. And all their feelings of these disciples are just going to go to where he was last. Folks, we don't go back to where he was. We go back to where he is. That's what we do. We move forward. Go to where Jesus is, not where he has been. If he says go here, then you go. You don't stay where you are. You see, we cannot allow our past experiences to dictate future experiences. Otherwise, we'll just keep living them and living them and living them. There are very few movies that I will watch again. I just, I just, because I've, I've had that experience, but there is one movie that I watch when it comes on. If I'm just, you know, going around, you know, how is it a man can watch 40 channels at once? It's a gift. It's a gift of God. I'm telling you, you know, once we were watching a movie and we're waiting for the dramatic ending and, and I was surfing so much that Pavey and, and Alex and Jackie are there and they get, they get this really angry face sometimes. You think they were angels? I'm telling you what. <laughs> Fallen angels. Anyway, so I'm, I'm clicking. You all know what I'm talking about. And I'm clicking, I'm racing through the channels and I come back to the channel where the movie was. It had this dramatic ending. And guess what happened? The credits came up. <laughs> we don't know whatever happened. But it happened. But let me go back to what I was saying. We were, you know... And you know what? This one movie, when it comes on the channel, I just got to stop. I got to stop because I got to see the end. But I know the end, but I got to see the end. And you know what that movie is? If you give me a dollar, I'll tell you. But anyway, <laughs> if it ever comes on, it's called Shawshank Redemption. I don't know what it is, but that thing just sucks me in because I got to know that they both make it to paradise. But folks, you know, if we tie our life to the past, we will never experience the future. What are you doing amongst the dead? Go and experience life. Move forward. Take the step of faith. Be bold. If Jesus tells you to do something or to go somewhere, do it. And have that life experience that only he can give you. So they were looking for they instead of him. They were looking in a place of death instead of looking in a place of life. And here's another one. Mark chapter 16 verse 1 to 3. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Do you know what? They were looking for help from the wrong person. You see, all the men, they were hiding because of fear that the Pharisees would come and get them. They were hiding, but the women, they were not afraid. They were bold and they were brave. They were amazing. And they went to the tomb. And they get there and they're thinking, who's going to roll away the stone? Who's going to roll it away? And they stand there and guess what? The stone had already been rolled away. Because the Father wanted to show them and show us that we're in a place of hardship and there is a stone in our way, he can roll that away. 
They were worried. Who's going to do this? But the Lord had already arranged it. Do you know that your days are marked out for you? Do you know that the experiences that you have are to take you to a better place? And that you would be an overcomer? That you would go beyond and, and stretch to a new place to be more than you could possibly be? There will be obstacles in your life, folks, if you haven't already figured it out. And worrying about how do we overcome them. Have you ever worried about anything? And then when you're in that circumstance, guess what? It doesn't happen. When I was 13 years old, I went on this camp, a church camp. Now, this is way before I met Pastor Pavey, all right? I'm just putting the, and before I became a Christian, and there was this girl there. And I looked at her, and she looked at me, and we just went, <laughs> you know what I mean. And, you know, we just got to know each other and was friends and all the rest of it. And somehow that we ended up becoming a couple on that camp. Well, at the end of the camp, my friend said to me, did you know that she has a boyfriend? And he's not on camp. Well, mate, I tell you, I'm sweating bullets. He was bigger than me, meaner than me, and faster than me. And they're the three me's you don't want. And I was just so worried. I could imagine my face looking like this and, and bruised. And I thought, oh, I'm a dead man walking. I can just feel it. I can just feel it. And this guy, because he was older than me, he actually worked at Woolworths at Indrapilly Shopping Town. Now, Indrapilly Shopping Town's changed. And this was Woolworths downstairs. Who can remember when Woolworths was downstairs? Right? And what they had was they had this kind of like the doors that would come down, but they were kind of like grates. You know, you could put your hand in and it was kind of like it would come down. And I said to myself, <laughs> you know, after the weekend... And after finding the horrible news, I thought, I've got to go and confront him. Because I knew he worked at Woolies. So I went to Woolies and the gate was down. So at least there was a barrier between me and him. And I thought, okay, if he's going to come and get me by the time he comes round the barrier, I'll be gone. And then he was actually standing at one of the checkouts. And I said, hey, um, John, can I speak to you? He goes, Yeah. He said, I heard you've been hanging out with my girlfriend. And I said, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's right. I have been. And, that, you know, like when you get nervous, your voice changes. You get that funny stomach feeling, you know, and you wet your pants. I didn't wet my pants, but that might have been happening. You wet your pants. You get worried. Pastor Ken's nodding. He knows what I mean. And, and you just think. And he goes, Jim Cameron. I said, yeah. He goes, you were hanging out with my girlfriend all weekend. I said, yeah. He says, I oh, don't worry about it. I don't like her anyway. <laughs> oh. All right. I'm the man. <laughs> Isn't it funny that we worry about things that don't actually happen? And we live in fear, but God hasn't given us a spirit of fear but power, love, and a soundness of mind to be able to go through life the way that he determines. Don't look for help from the wrong people. God will roll away the stone if he needs to roll away the stone in your life. So who do we look for? Well, very simply, we look to him. Let's go back in time in the story of Jesus. And let's go back to John chapter 11, verse 17 to 27, as we finish up this morning. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. And Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha had heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Here's someone who's a bit miffed. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, 
I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God who is coming into the world. Folks, we have to look to Jesus because he is the resurrection and the life. This word life is a word zo, which means this. It is a real life. It is a genuine life. It is an active life. It is a vigorous life. It is, in fact, the life as God has it himself. You can have that life. Very simply, life, real, genuine life. But there is just one thing that you must do, and that is believe in him. That God raised him from the dead, and he gives you this gift, a free gift. You don't have to do anything for this gift. You don't have to do certain things to get approval. You don't have to give money. It doesn't matter if you are born poor or born rich. The opportunity for this life to live the power that God has, you can simply have by acknowledging that your life is separated from God and that you need to connect back to God. That there is this thing called sin that exists. It is not a figment of our imagination. Some people say, I don't believe in sin. And then I simply ask them a couple of questions. When they're genuinely trying to find truth and purpose for life, I say to them this, have you ever lied? Yes. Have you ever stolen anything? Yes. Have you ever had really bad thoughts about things? Yes. Well, my friend, that's called sin. And you're living under a power that God doesn't want you to live in. And God wants to take away that power and give you life to live. And it's simply by saying this, Jesus, forgive me of my sin and come and live in my life and bring life to me and I will have it. You know, the day that I became a Christian was for me the greatest day of all and my life changed. I was a young man who was lost without purpose, without hope, going to hell. But Jesus made himself real to me and I asked him into my life and my life has never been the same again. Totally changed. Totally changed. Would you stand with me this morning? And on this Resurrection Sunday, I want to give you an opportunity to respond just by a simple prayer, but by acknowledging that you don't have God in your life. And the reason why you don't have God in your life is because of sin. We are born in sin. It's, it's, it's just how it just flows out of our life. But you know what? God wants to change that in your life. So I'd like us to close our eyes and bow our heads. And if you have never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, to be the Lord of your life, you can do that now. But I need you to acknowledge that. And just to maybe just raise your hand where you are this morning. And just say, Jesus, come into my life. Change my life. Thank you for your hand raised this morning. Just a simple acknowledgement that you need God in your life. Thank you for that response. Thank you for that response. Just a simple prayer. And I just ask that if everyone would pray this prayer with me this morning. Dear Jesus, I come to you this morning and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. 
I ask you to cleanse me. And I ask you to forgive me. And I ask that you would come into my life and be the Savior and the Lord of my life. I thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.